Welcome to the Old Timer Radio Superman Show. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, adam at adamsweb.us. Uh, and remember to check out our website over at Tales of the Dim Night, dimnight.com. Uh, we now have the pre-orders available for our print book, due on November 22nd. Uh, we also virtual book signing, ebooks, and a lot more available over there. Very excited with the way the cover came out, uh, so encourage you to go over to dimnight.com. Well, we l last left our hero with the Leopard Woman and Brower trying to get away. Let's see how they make out. It's Lita the Leopard Woman, Part 12. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Yes, it's Superman! Strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can leap tall buildings at a single bound, race a speeding bullet to its target, then steal in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. But before we join Superman, listen. And now to our story. When a violent explosion set fire to the waterfront hideout of the Leopard Woman spy ring, Clark Kent and Major Campbell, chief of the Secret Service, were certain the woman and her Japanese henchmen had perished. But unknown to them, the cunning female spy, together with her radio operator, a man named Brower, made good her escape by jumping off the roof into the water a moment before the explosion leveled the house. As our story continues today, we find them speeding along the road in a stolen car. Brower is at the wheel. From a news broadcast heard on the car radio, they've just learned that the police of eight states are now on their trail. Listen. Well, what can we do now? You heard what the radio said. The roads are under guard. We'll get off the roads. What do you mean? There's a private seaplane base up ahead. We've got to get one of the ships and head out to sea. What good will that do us? None of those private planes carry enough gas to get us far. We won't have far to go. Not if we can contact one of our submarines off the coast. It's our only chance now that they know or even suspect that we escaped. There's the base. I'll turn in. There's only one plane moored. One is enough. Come on. I don't see anyone around. There's a watchman in that shack. He's asleep. We shouldn't have any trouble. Have you a revolver? Yes, but it got soaking wet. I can use the butt. Now, quiet. You stay out here. I'll sneak in and take care of him. He's dead to the world. This should be a cinch. Watch the road in case anyone stops or drives in. I will, but hurry. Okay. Uh, he won't wake up for a while. Yeah, uh, he won't wake up. What about keys? We won't need them. I'll cross the ignition wires. Come on, we've got to row out to the plane. Wait a minute. Get down. There's a car coming. All right, come on. There's a rowboat tied to the dock. Any oars in it? Yes. <laughs> We're running in luck. Hop in. Can you make it? I think so. All right? Yes. Sit in the back seat. I'll cast off. Well, so far, so good. Are you sure you can get the plane started? Positive. Won't be the first time I've crossed wires. Say, uh, you can try a seaplane, can't you? Why not? It's no different from any other plane, except for pontoon. Suppose it has no radio. That's the chance we're taking. Easy, easy. You're right on top of it. Pull in your right. Uh, grab the mooring line. I've got it. Now, can you get aboard? I'll keep the boat close. Don't pull in. I won't. Open the cabin door. I'll climb inside. I'll follow you. What about the boat? That's the least of our worries. Here I come. Okay. Close the door. If you can get her started, we're all right. Don't worry about that. Now see if there's a flashlight in the tool compartment. Yes. Good. Shine it under the dashboard. 
There's a radio, isn't there? Yes. Yes, sending and receiving. Hold the light steady. Step on the starter. That's enough. Any trouble? No, I'll get it. Flower. What? The car just pulled in off the road. Two men are walking toward the shack. Step on the starter. There she goes. The men are running down to the dock. Get set to give her the gun. I'll cut the mooring line. Okay, let her go. Rising from the water like some monstrous seabird, the plane roars into the darkness headed for the open ocean. Meanwhile, back at the Metropolis office of the Secret Service, Clark Kent and Major Campbell await word of the leopard woman's arrest. Kent, that woman is amazing. I can't bring myself to believe that she dove off that roof. It just doesn't seem possible. And by this time, you should realize that anything's possible. She took a desperate chance. Well, what good did it do her? She's bound to be picked up. Every road leading out of Metropolis is covered. They can't get through. I hope you're right, Major. She's led us quite a chase. I'd like nothing better than to see her behind bars. Hmm. If you recall, she was behind bars once. Your brilliant little plan let her out. Now, let's not bring that up. Hmm. Oh, excuse me. Major Campbell speaking. Oh, yes? What? Oh, hold on a minute. Uh, Kent, jot this down as I give it to you. All right. Uh, go ahead. Midtown Harbor Seaplane Base, Amphibian NX-312. Yes, I've got that. Uh, what, what time was this? 5.30 a.m. Any description? I see. All right. Uh, thanks a lot. Yes, I'll check on it. Well, this looks bad, Ken. What's it all about? A man and a woman slugged the watchman at the Midtown Harbor Seaplane Base at 5.30 this morning and stole an amphibian moored offshore. Stole it? A man and a woman? Yes. Does that mean anything to you? It might mean plenty. Who was that called? McCary at the state police barracks. Said two of his men drove in just as the plane took off. Uh-huh. Found the watchman out cold. Oh, Ken, I don't like it. That woman has slipped through again. Let's not jump to conclusions, Major. In the first place, what good would a seaplane do to the leopard woman? I don't know, but I'm willing to bet she's behind this. We know she and Brower escaped the explosion, stole a car on the state highway, and were headed out of the city. Wait a minute. The firemen found a shortwave sending set in the wreckage of that building, didn't they? Oh, yes. What's that got to do with it? Well, it proved our original suspicion was correct, that the leopard woman was communicating with enemy submarines offshore. I still don't get the point. That seaplane, was it radio-equipped? McCary didn't say. What are you driving at, Ken? Simply this. If the leopard woman and Brower did steal that plane, they're probably planning to contact a foreign sub, get aboard, and make a perfect getaway. Well, what are we going to do about it? Sit here and stare at one another? No, we've got to get to a shortwave listening post, a Coast Guard station. Maybe we can pick up the plane signal. Come on. Now, wait a minute. O'Hara, meet me downstairs with the car. Yes, right away. Come on, Major. I'm coming. I'm coming. Well, anything doing, Kent? No, not yet. You never told me you could handle shortwave apparatus. There's not much you can't do. That's laying on a little thick, Major. Hey, wait. Something's coming through. I'll switch it to the speaker, listen. Must have position. Urgent. Must have position. Urgent. Check. Agent 1-4. Code word. Anschluss. Come in. What's that? Oh, we're calling from the plane. Listen. Position 65 miles southwest harbor. Is that the submarine? Yes, our hunch was right. Well, wh- where are you going, Ken? Got an idea. Call the Navy Yard and give them the location of that sub. I'll be back. Racing down the hall, Kent darts into a vacant office, closes the door behind him. In a moment, his street clothes give way to the blue costume and brilliant red cape of Superman. Stepping to the window, he raises it. 65 miles southwest. You're in for a surprise, Leopard Woman. A very unpleasant surprise. Up! Up! And away! compliment you, Brower. Everything worked out to perfection. Oh, it was better than being blown up? Yes, far better. We should be sighting the U-21 soon. Look for a periscope. Fortunately, the sea is calm. We should have no trouble landing. Before we set the plane adrift or sink it, I should like to send a final message to our friend, Mr. Kent. <laughs> it would be amusing to... What's the matter? I don't know. Something's wrong. The controls don't respond. 
We're banking. No, it can't be. Look! Hayes at the window. I saw it. It's gone now. What's happening? He's heading back toward land. Flower! Cut the motor. We're still moving. Faster than before. What's that wind? I can't believe it. It's insane. Flower, something is pushing us. Flower! Flower! I don't know how you accomplished it, Kent. But if anyone ever needs the services of a superman, I'll send them to you. <laughs> nice of you to say that, Major, but... Uh... I know. It was nothing. Nothing except that a stolen plane, piloted by one of the most dangerous foreign spies in the world, suddenly comes down on the beach in a perfect three-point landing, and when the Coast Guard men haul Brower and the Leopard Woman out, they're so frightened they can't talk. That's nothing. <laughs> well, maybe someday you'll be able to tell me how it was done. Perhaps. But in the meantime, I have a story to get out. Well, then I'll leave you. Oh, uh, by the way, how's that youngster, the, uh, the one who opened up all this spy business? Jimmy Olsen? Hmm. Oh, he's fine. Mr. White, the editor, sent him to a dude ranch after he got out of the hospital. He's there now. Well, give him my regards if you see him. Sure thing. Bye. Bye, Kent. Now, to get to that story. Oh, now what? Hello. Yes, this is Clark Kent. Where? Rocky Point. Yes, I'll accept the call. Okay. That's where Jimmy is. And what he wants. Yes? Yes, hello, Jimmy. How are you? What? I, I, I can't hear you, Jim. Trouble? What kind of trouble? W were you in the accident? What? Did you say ghost car? Ghost? Now, now, now take it easy, Jimmy, and tell... Hello. Jimmy. Hello. Operator. Operator. Well, it certainly looks like another baffling mystery is brewing. What could Jimmy have meant by a ghost car? And why was he suddenly cut off? Don't miss the next episode. It begins another thrilling adventure. Tune in and follow the story with the Superman. Don't forget, tune in again for the next thrilling episode with... Superman! Look! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Welcome back! You know, I, after we finish a serial, I always like to go over to the Superman homepage and kind of compare notes with what James Launce has written about the given serial. This one, he had an interesting note here. They mentioned the uh, newspaper, The Sentinel, is where Lois Lane found uh, the leopard advertisement, uh, and that's actually the name of the paper uh, uh, in the Green Hornet. Don't think it was the same Sentinel, just uh, same name uh, reused. I, I thought this was a good serial, kind of, to me, seemed to go on uh, a little uh, uh, along. Uh, it, se it seemed like it could have wrapped up a little earlier, but um, I thought overall pretty satisfying. A couple things that Lance liked that I also did, uh, he pointed out there's a lot of uh, real action and cutting loose with uh, Superman's uh, powers. Uh, really, they're kind of uh, in the radio show, kind of struggling uh, throughout the serials to define uh, Superman's powers. And sometimes uh, it's been inconsistent. But in this serial, really comes on strong with uh, stopping the torpedo, uh, stopping, you know, dragging an airplane back down and giving it a three point landing. Really impressive displays and a few little. Uh, wink winks to the audience that we know Superman's secret, but nobody else does. So overall, pretty enjoyable, and we're set up for another great serial uh, started on Wednesday. Join us for that then. Uh, for now, though, I have a common email to me, adam at adamsweb.us. Uh, remember to go to dimnight.com and uh, pre-order Tales of the Dim Knight due out next week, November 22nd. But from Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.